Hey guys, my name is Ankazwa and I welcome you to the first episode of my How to Build a Redstone Computer tutorial series. Please note I already did a tutorial on how to build this thing in the background there and this is a redstone ALU and I will be expanding up on this tutorial series. So please check that out, links in the description before you actually watch those videos right here because those are pretty much based on the ALU tutorial series and I will just go ahead and extend the ALU in order for it to be a full redstone computer instead just starting all over again. So keep that in mind when watching those videos. What we're going to talk about today is this um, neat program counter right here. It is kind of small and it looks kind of nice I think compared to the sheer mass of my ALU lines but it's not the most effective way to do that kind of thing and I will just tell you how it's basically done and not go into too much of a detail because I'm pretty sure you can build a better version of that but this one here gets the job done so let's hop right into it. The first the first thing of course is the program counter needs actually to be able to count up in binary so whenever I press this button the counter counts and this is done in a way that uh, all those single bits are separate T flip flops and they are connected in a way that whenever I turn one of the T flip flops to the off state and the next T flip flop will actually change state. So if I turn this one off, this one will turn off and trigger the next T flip flop and this is on so the next T flip flops won't get triggered and this allows for binary counting. The T flip flops I used are the same ones I used with the memory cells. So no difficulty in that and I just connected the output torch to the uh, the output line to the next input torch and this is exactly what you need in order for the counting. Then I of course got a reset line so I would be able to uh, restart programs or stuff like that and as you guys can see the reset line basically sets all the lamps to true and then a separate signal comes in with a bit of delay and resets all the lines. I could just could have just inverted them but I quite like to have those torches here as indicators and the lamps are just a temporary thing for in order to be actually able to see where the program counter is. And yeah then of course you need to be able to set the program counter to whatever number you like so you can actually jump between line of lines of codes. So that is achieved and as you guys could see before the input lines which are now simulated by those levers are set to 7 and that's the same for the program counter and I can assure you it works with well basically every number even though I haven't tested all 64 of them. What this thing will do is basically this will be hooked up to our clock and will uh, for every every clock cycle basically read out the um, or indicate the line of code that shall be executed next and those output lines here will go into a decoder which will then um, choose which line from the program memory to pick so that's basically all of that business and yeah there's not much left to say about that thing as I said I'm pretty sure you will be able to um, make a nicer version of, of this on your own probably or if not you can always just download the world file the links for that is in the description and I hope you guys learned something from that I will be releasing one of those tutorials per week because they actually take me quite a while to do much longer than I had initially anticipated but yeah I hope I will see you guys at the next episode and if you liked what you saw just always leave a like it helps me out a lot and I hopefully will see you guys next time.